Juneteenth, what is Juneteenth? We hear so much about uh, Juneteenth now. It's a holiday that many people didn't didn't know anything about until the last several years. Um, Juneteenth is a liberation day, a freedom day. It used to be called in some areas Jubilee Day or Emancipation Day. We have our own Eman Emancipation Day here in the state of Missouri that we celebrate on the first weekend of August and have done uh, since the end of, of slavery. Juneteenth is a holiday that came out of, out of what happened in Texas. In, on the first Juneteenth um, in 1865, June 19th, 1865, General Gordon Granger arrived in Texas and put out an announcement saying that all enslaved people were there free at that point in time moving forward. And um, if you can imagine being a person who had heard, by this time most of, most of the uh, enslaved people had heard that the, the war was over or that, that you know, other, other uh, enslaved people were, were free at this point in time, but it, it didn't come to them until June 19, 1865. After the, the uh, proclamation, a lot, of, a lot of enslaved people at that time gathered their families as best they could and they tried to go back and retrace them their steps. If you can imagine, um, say, having grown up in, a, in a, a certain community and being sold off um, to other places and so many of those family members tried to go back to find members of their families. Um, children, mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, and um, and they would put also put uh, letters in the newspapers advertising uh, to look for these family members. And so every year when they would come together, it was like a family reunion. It was like a family reunion of sorts, um, and also sometimes ways to share information about other people that may have been lost along the way. It's always been a, a major uh, reason for families to come back together. A lot of times it, it incorporates music and always food, always food, um, barbecue and um, a lot of uh, red drinks. That's, a, that's another thing that's very important in, in the culture was um, having red drinks, whether that's you know strawberry soda, red Kool-Aid. My grandmother always used to make a special red Kool-Aid. Um, and, and then, you know, just activities that bring the family together. Years ago, a gentleman constructed a flag for Juneteenth, uh, something that we could look at and identify as a uh, representative of Juneteenth. We call it the Juneteenth flag. The star in the middle signifies Texas. And then the outline here, this is the significance of a nova, meaning spreading out. So you have the star and then this nova coming out. So like the idea of Juneteenth started in Texas and it spreads out. The, the line with, between the red and the blue uh, is actually a horizon. So the overall idea behind the flag is that this idea of Juneteenth spreading out all over and um, op actually opening up a new day. So we are um, on the cusp, uh, have, have come through a lot from the time of the end of slavery. We are not there yet, but we have um, gotten to a point in time where at least this, this holiday is, is recognized and recognized nationally. We have another day here in Missouri called Emancipation Day, the first weekend of August, and I encourage people to take part in that celebration also. It, you know, uh, sometimes people think, well, you can only have one celebration. We can have as many celebrations as we want. So um, anyways, uh, take part in the Juneteenth celebrations, but also make sure and take part in uh, Emancipation Day celebrations. It's all about um, making sure that we honor the history uh, of our country and the history of the people who were enslaved in our country and how they had to fight in order to get their freedom. So um, here in Joplin, we have several different events that are happening. I know for one, our uh, Juneteenth celebration uh, of Southwest Missouri Committee 
uh, is putting together on June 18th on Saturday between 1 and 3. There will be a living history presentation along with an art project. Um, we'll have a couple of speakers and uh, just a, a time for children, uh, adults, whoever, to kind of come together and uh, talk about Juneteenth and, and um, make, some, make some new memories. Um, on Sunday, we will be over in Carthage at Kellogg Lake. There will be fishing and barbecue and um, you know some music, uh, that type of thing going on over there. So we certainly hope that people will come out and join us. If you have any questions at all, um, you can reach out to the Mini Hackney Community Service uh, page. Uh, there's also several other uh, groups that will be doing some things. I know there's a Black Expo that will be happening on Saturday, and um, and then a soul food um, uh, extravaganza, <laughs> with different types of soul food that will be happening on Sunday, I believe. So we'll try to make sure and get some more of that information to everyone. When General Granger arrived uh, in Texas, his, um, his job was to make sure that not only the enslaved people were released from bondage, but uh, to enforce the fact that uh, if they decided to remain where they were, that they were to get paid for it. So uh, this is General Order Number 3, and, and this was what uh, he had read. The people of Texas are informed that, in accordance with a proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves, and the connection heretofore existing between them becomes that between employer and hired labor. The freedmen are advised to remain quietly at their present homes and work for wages. They are informed that they will not be allowed to collect at military posts and that they will not be supported in idleness either there or elsewhere. So that was the, um, the announcement that was read. My own personal history is that my great great grandfather was freed by those by those orders, and he and his brother pretty quickly took off, uh, left Texas on foot, uh, trying to come back to this this area. They had been enslaved in Missouri and then sold to a family that took them to Texas. As an enslaved person in Missouri. If you were, especially on South, in Southwest Missouri, if you were thinking about how to free yourself, the thought that would always come to you was Kansas. And so when they left, because we knew that Kansas was a state that, uh, you know, free towns for black people could live. So they left Texas with the idea that they were going to go to Kansas. They ended up going to Paola, Kansas, is where they ended up settling. And one of the other things that I always try to think about and talk about with Juneteenth is that, you know, um, many people thought when you free this number of enslaved people, that they would be given something. Most of them were giving, given nothing. They went from being enslaved to then being very, very poor, just trying to be able to make it. And um, so that's oftentimes when people talk about reparations for slavery or, or, or whatever, that's what they're talking about. But at that point in time, they should have actually gotten something to be able to start their lives over again. But um, to my own, my, my great, great grandfather and his brother uh, moved, to, uh, walked to Kansas and uh, there in Paola, Kansas, this idea that this was gonna be a safe place for them. But within 15 years, my uncle, um, the, the, my great-grandfather's brother, he was lynched in Paola, Kansas on the square there. So uh, even in places where they thought that they would be safe and free, that's one of the things that, uh, that happened after slavery was that there were hardly, there were very few places that were safe or free unless you were in the you know, very, very northern parts of the country. Well, once again, I just want to really thank you all for uh, taking part and uh, 
looking at Juneteenth and maybe a different way, maybe understanding a little bit more about Juneteenth and some of the symbols associated with Juneteenth. Uh, again, I encourage you to go out, find as many, as many activities as you can, but also just take some time. You don't even have to take part in an activity. You can just take some time within yourself, maybe do some reading on Juneteenth, uh, find out about uh, emancipation, uh, what happened to emancipate enslaved people in our own town, our own area, our own uh, state. So um, all of those things are important. Uh, most important is to be informed and to be, um, to be you know, supportive of people however they celebrate. So thank you so very, very much and have a wonderful day. Happy Juneteenth.